Hey guys, welcome to the Animation Movies Recapped. This is David with you. In today's video, I am going to recap a 2022 action animation series called Tales of the Jedi. This is an outstanding series with full of actions and suspense. Though it's real complicated, I've made it easy to understand for you. I am sure that you're going to like it. So without wasting any more time, let's start with the recap. In the middle of the night, the cry of a newborn baby is heard across a small village near the woods. There is jubilation, and the people run out of their houses toward where the baby has been born. They gather in front of an inn and watch as the child is handed to the mother. It's a baby girl, and she is named Ahsoka. A year later, Ahsoka's mom takes her along into the forest to hunt as custom demands. Although her father doesn't see any need for it, Pavdi, Ahsoka's mom, still insists on carrying out the custom. Together, mother and child head out of the village into the forest. Before they leave the village, they stop at the place of Gantica, an elder in the village who applies a luck potion on both their heads, after which they leave the village. Inside the forest, Pavdi sees some goats eating grass, she carefully aims and shoots. One goat drops dead while the others run for their lives. Pavdi, carrying Ahsoka, walks up to the bleeding animal, and using a knife, she takes out its life completely. She begins tying the legs of the dead animal to carry it back home. Ahsoka is on the grass, watching her mom bundle the dead animal. Pavdi doesn't notice the appearance of a saber-toothed tiger until Ahsoka gestures toward it. The tiger attacks Pavdi and she protects herself from the wild animal. Ahsoka is ignorant of the fact that her mother is in danger and expresses her excitement at the scene. This draws the attention of the tiger who tries to attack her, but her mom releases some shots from her gun which deters the animal. At the village, the sound of her gun is heard, and it's time they know that it's an alarm for help. Pavit's husband and some other villagers gather arms and hurriedly rush into the forest. In the forest, Ahsoka's mom is engaged in a fierce battle with the tiger. She has a knife out and she tries to defend herself and her child. The tiger hits and flings her across the ground and walks towards the baby on the grass. The villagers appear, shooting their guns at the tiger and it immediately grabs Ahsoka in its mouth and flees into the forest. Pavdi tries to run after her baby but she's held back by the rescue troops. The tiger takes Ahsoka to its den and drops her. Ahsoka staggers on her feet and this makes the animal roar, slowly walking towards her to devour her. As it approaches, Ahsoka places her little hands on the tiger's face, and it steps back, roaring loudly and not attacking her anymore. The villagers are standing at the front of the forest waiting for the men who had gone to search for Ahsoka. These men return and inform her parents and the villagers that they couldn't find the baby. Suddenly, they hear a roar and they see the tiger appearing with Ahsoka on its back. Pavdi slowly walks over to the tiger and picks up her child, thanking the animal in the village's native language, and it leaves. Pavdi asks Ganika, the village elder, the reason for what just happened, and it is revealed that Ahsoka is a Jedi. In another village, a spacecraft containing a master Jedi named Dooku and his apprentice, Qui-Gon Jinn, lands. This village looks very deserted and the people living there are hungrily looking. Master Dooku and his student are on the search for the abducted son of a senator. The villagers, on seeing them, enter their houses, close their windows and turn off the lights. They enter a room and after introducing themselves, ask about the abducted son of the senator. The woman who masterminded the kidnap, explains to them that the senator whose name is Dagonet is very corrupt and has done nothing but bad to their village. She takes them to where the boy is being kept captive. The Jedi see him and ask about his well-being and he tells them that he hasn't been treated badly by his kidnappers. He expresses his concern for the state of living of the villagers. They are interrupted by a man who runs in and announces that Senator Dagonet has arrived in the village. The woman behind the kidnap accused the Jedi of betraying them but they reply that the Senator isn't aware of their visit to the village. Outside, Senator Dagonet arrives, it was a hungry woman who lived in the village that informed him of the whereabouts of his son. He is met by the Jedi outside and orders the Master Jedi to arrest the people behind the kidnap. Master Dooku refuses to carry out this arrest, stating that they aren't done with the investigation. This makes the Senator furious, and he takes matters into his hands. He orders his men to aim their guns at the Jedi and the abductors, warning them to step aside and carry out the arrest as he requested. But the Master Jedi stands his ground, informing the Senator that he doesn't work for the Senate, but to uphold peace and order in the Republic. An exchange of gunfire ensues between the Senator's guards and the villagers. The Jedi draw out their lightsabers and protect themselves from the bullets. Soon, the villagers are overpowered and only the Jedi are standing. Senator Dagonet victoriously vows to make the village suffer more than they already are for defying him. 
In a fit of rage, Master Dooku uses his powers to hold him in a chokehold and single-handedly defeat the senator's guards. Master Dooku is on the verge of killing the senator and his student sees this. He runs to where the senator's son was handcuffed and released him, telling him to go save his father. The boy runs out, he sees Master Dooku almost snuffing the life out of his father. He runs towards them and begs the Master Jedi to stop. Dooku comes to his right senses and stops. The senator and his men are overpowered and they surrender. The next day, the senator heads back home with his son, while reconstruction and restructuring commenced in the village. The villagers thank Master Dooku and he thanks his apprentice for what he did to prevent the death of Senator Dagonet. A few years later, Master Dooku and another Master Jedi named Windu head to the Rixus Secundus to retrieve the body of a late Jedi who died in an ambush. Master Dooku has high suspicions about the sudden death of Master Ketri, but Master Windu tells him that they would follow protocols and just retrieve the Jedi's body. At the Rixus, they meet with the senator who was present at Master Katri's death, Senator Larik. The Jedi carry out a bit of interrogation, asking the senator certain questions, which he answers. Master Dooku then requests that they be taken to the scene of the ambush. This doesn't go down well with Master Windu who is a protocol-abiding Jedi, unlike Dooku. At the scene of the ambush and Master Katri's death, Master Dooku carries out investigations, asking the senator to describe how the ambush happened. After some personal deductions, Dooku draws out his lightsaber, informing the senator that it is difficult for a Jedi to be compromised in an ambush. He announces that the late Jedi was killed by the senator and threatens him to confess. The senator confessed that Master Katri was killed by his guards. As soon as he says this, he is shot by one of his guards. The truth has finally been revealed. A fight ensues between the guards and their drones against the two master Jedis. After a while, the last standing guards confess to the Jedi that are a part of a resistance group in Raxus who intend to fight against the harmful policies made by the corrupt senator. They are apprehended and put in prison. The late Jedi is laid to rest, and Master Windu is given her seat in the council. It doesn't seem like Master Windu is impressed by this. Fast forward to years later, at the Jedi Council headquarters, Master Dooku is deleting an archive memory. He comes out from the archives and is informed that his former apprentice, Qui-Gon Jinn revealed to the council that he encountered a Sith Lord. Master Dooku meets with him and makes inquiries about the rumors, and Qui-Gon confirms it. Although the council doesn't believe what he said, Master Dooku believes his claim. The appearance of a Sith Lord is something to be bothered about. But another Jedi, Master Yaddle informs them that it is nothing to worry about. Later on, it is revealed that Qui-Gon is dead. He dies at the hand of a Sith Lord. Master Dooku is upset about the death of his former student, and he blames the council for his death. Master Yaddle informs him of the location of Kui Jin's funeral, but Dooku reveals to her that he has no intention of attending. Every Master Jedi goes to his funeral except Master Dooku. He heads out of the Jedi headquarters in his spacecraft, navigating towards somewhere else in the galaxy. He doesn't notice Master Yaddle following him closely. She follows Dooku's spacecraft to where he lands in the farther part of the galaxy. Master Yaddle alights from her spacecraft, walking inside the building. She sees Dooku having a conversation with a Sith Lord and eavesdrops on them. Qui-Gon Jinn's death was caused by this Sith Lord, and Master Dooku has been working together with him. Master Dooku queries the Sith Lord about the death of his former apprentice, telling him that it wasn't part of the plan. Jedi Master Dooku is under the evil manipulation of the Sith Lord. Master Yaddle coming out from where she hid, interrupts their conversation, asking Dooku to free himself from the control of the Sith Lord. She informs him that she had stepped down from her seat in the council and can help him. The Sith Lord orders Master Dooku to kill her, and they engage in long combat which takes a while, after which Yaddle is overpowered and killed by Master Dooku. Back in the Jedi headquarters, we see a grown Ahsoka. She has developed and has commenced proper training as a Jedi. She is a fast learner which displays the traits of a skilled Jedi. Not only that, but she aces the various tests and training that are brought up to her to the satisfaction of the onlooking Master Jedi. However, her master isn't very impressed with her performance and he lets her know this. According to him, the tests and the droids provided at the Jedi headquarters are predictable, and he wants her to be prepared for the unpredictable. He then arranges training with the military for Ahsoka. She is placed to combat with trained military officers in the galaxy. This is very different from the training and tests she had been experiencing at the Jedi headquarters, so it's very difficult for her. In the process of the test, she gets hit by lasers and passes out countlessly. Her master waited for her to regain consciousness and resume the training. Ahsoka slips in and out of consciousness and continues training until she has perfected her training and knocked out the soldiers. A funeral takes place at Coruscant. This is the funeral of Ahsoka's friend. Ahsoka disguises herself to attend it. 
She is cited by a senator who follows her, informing her that she shouldn't be found at the Coruscant. Ahsoka tells him that the lady who died was her friend. They hear a patrol coming, so they run to hide. Senator Organa hands her a comms device, imploring her to contact him if she needs help. Ahsoka reluctantly takes it but reveals to the senator that she is tired of wars and combat, and seeks to be away from all of it. She later leaves the Coruscant in her jet. Ahsoka begins working on a farm, away from fighting and violence. This farm belongs to an elderly man and his two children, a boy and a girl. One day at the farm, Ahsoka uses her powers to save the farm owner's daughter from being crushed by bales of hay. Everyone rushes to the farmer's daughter, relieved that she isn't hurt, not knowing that it was Ahsoka that made it so. Unlike the rest, the farmer's daughter saw Ahsoka save her from being crushed by the bales, and she knew that Ahsoka is a Jedi. One evening, the farmer's daughter informs Ahsoka that she would accompany her to carry out the delivery of some purchased farm goods. The path they are to take is dangerous, and Ahsoka asks why she doesn't take her brother with her. The farmer's daughter tells Ahsoka that she knows that she is a Jedi and that she feels safe and protected with her. Unknown to them, her brother was eavesdropping on their conversation, hearing everything she told Ahsoka. The next day, Ahsoka and the farmer's daughter head out to the farm to carry out deliveries. They return in the evening and see the entire farm and produce in flames. The farmer's son had reported what he heard to the forces, thereby putting the farmer and his family in danger. The man who burnt the farm also tied the hands and legs of the farmer and his son, demanding Ahsoka. He is about to kill them when Ahsoka appears behind him. They engage in combat and Ahsoka kills him. The farmer and his family are sad about what has happened to their farm, and his son apologized to his father and Ahsoka. Ahsoka realizes that the safety of the farmer's family has been compromised. So to keep them safe, she calls on the help of a friend, the senator who asked that she call him in times of assistance. Senator Organa helps the farmer and his family. He informs Ahsoka that things have gotten worse, so Ahsoka decides to return to her life of being a full-time Jedi. The end. If you love this video please leave a like and subscribe for more amazing videos.